I hadn't doubted Robbie's unhappiness in Stockholm, and to be honest, I expected more of the same in Copenhagen. But 10,000 screaming blonde women seemed to have put some lead back in his pencil. That was ace. That was really, really ace. Ace, ace. Ace than ace. The audience. <laughs> Fucking ace being a pop star. No other better job. And do you know what? If a few paparazzi take your picture, so fucking well, do you know what I mean? What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. If you can get on stage and enjoy something like that. I was on stage, I was saying, oh, fucking hell. I'm gonna have to enjoy it now. That was amazing. Fucking amazing. I I'm ace. Don't tell anyone, though. It's, it's all to do with the crowd. Because Sweden was shit. We've had this problem before, Yeah, it's, you know, once that, the crowd get into gear and you're off, you could shit on stage and they'd fucking love it. <laughs> Cross schlongs. Rock and roll mythology is all about excess. And like most people, I'd always assumed that being on tour meant leaving behind a trail of vomit in a series of wrecked hotel rooms. The Odell Classic. Classic. Live from Belgium on Channel 5. <laughs> but since he gave up the drink, Robbie's got a new kind of recreation. The inner circle drink mineral water and spend hours playing cards. Oh, he's laid down his seven. Classic Uno. <laughs> Uno. Oh. 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 Come on, somebody get out. Robbie's a multi-million pound business, jointly managed by two veterans of the music industry. The unseen Tim Clark puts deals together and plans Robbie's future with his friend David Enthoven. While Tim's back in the office, David goes on the road with Robbie and offers 24-hour support. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Last night I thought it was going to be difficult, and it was a fantastic evening. Really good evening. So, yeah, I'm happy with it, really happy with it. And the record's selling well. So, from all of that point of view, it's great. And Robert enjoyed himself last night, so... Came off show with a great, great gig. Maybe I'm crazy. 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 He's a special human being and his ability to show emotion really, really touches me. It's been a privilege to be part of the sort of nurturing of him, I suppose, is the best way of it. You know, he, he, the real, we haven't really seen the real Rob yet, and he is emerging, and that's what to me is really exciting, you know. He's just started, he's 27 years old, for God's sake, it's, it's nothing. I'm so superstitious, so there's something you should know. The reason I'm doing you is because your friends have now. This could have easily been Rob's last tour. He just started into stopping drinking again and was very frightened and didn't know whether he could perform again. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. I have to say, if at any time um, he and I, on a personal level, sat down and he actually said to me, look, Dad, I cannot do this anymore, I want to stop this, we have to stop it, it would stop. I mean, I'm not going to allow, th allow the boy to be crucified just for the sake of, you know, making money. Like most celebrities, Robbie has to buy security. He's protected 24 hours a day by a team of ex-soldiers. All his movements are planned with military precision. I 
planned when he wanted a game of football in Hamburg. Two members of the team had to do a recce. So we've basically come here today to uh, look prior to Rob and everybody else coming to the sports ground to make sure that all the facilities here are, are safe and that we know exactly where everything is. Should we have an injury? Should there be press? Should there be fans or any threat to Rob and any of the party? Uh, we've moved from the hotel um, along the road, the main road. There are two routes, two main routes there, and we've timed the journey so that we know uh, roughly how long it's going to take, what route to take, a secondary route as well, should we need to move off of that for whatever reason. We've got here now, uh, and we obviously we've got the address so we know where we are. We're now going to have a look in, do a complete 360 degree look around the area where we're going to be, so we know how many exits are in, how many exits are out, how many buildings are there, what facilities the buildings have, if there is a manager or a groundsman, uh, where the phone point is, what medical facilities they have. <laughs> The effort's worth it in the end because then, for instance, I'm looking around now, I can see, for example, a camera crew, photographers or anything like that can easily walk up there, take pictures, uh, it's easy access for the public, um, but at least we're in a secure enough environment. Right, how much distance between the fence and the hedge over there? Is it the, he the hedge is right up against the fence, it but it's... You can see right through the, f yeah. the hedge yeah, and just, then through I'm the fence. For, uh, it's the long same lenses idea. And stuff like that. It's going to be no problem at all for them with a long lens. They won't even need a long lens. Yeah. Our priority is to protect the, the client. Our job is prevention rather than cure. If we're reacting to a situation, then to a certain extent we fail because we're not preempting it and we haven't done our background job. That's the difference between what we do and, and, and being a bodyguard. And if, if the worst came to the worst and we had to throw ourselves, then we'd have to, but uh, the situation would be dealt with. Despite the elaborate security arrangements, Robbie decides he'd quite like the German press to watch him play football. I'm not a learned gent. You know, I'm not a great mind. When I learn what my mind is for, or what I'm great at, then I'm going to be brilliant at it. But when I think about politics, disease, war, famine, literature, poetry, um, the arts, I'm this big, I've got no opinion. I don't know what to say. I was asked to do a review of some records once. And I can't review shit. Halfway through it, I got up and just walked out because I was shitting myself that much because I didn't have an opinion about anything. And I gave a rock and roll of it excuse that I was out late last night and I feel a bit sick. I'm going fucking home. You know? But really inside, I was just petrified because they were going to find me out as some charlatan that doesn't know anything about music or doesn't have an opinion about music. Basically, I'm that wrapped up in myself. The only opinion I have about anything is about me, and it's a fucking terrible opinion. The grades that I give myself throughout the day for doing this interview, for getting on stage, to talking to you, to talking to Josie, to talking to that girl last night, to talking, they're all below average, way, way below average. Could do better. Doesn't mix well with others. What, so are, what are you going uh, doing tonight in Hamburg? Any plans? I'm going to go and have sex with a prostitute, I think. <laughs> okay. And then uh, probably score some drugs, probably some smack and some... Uh, and then get myself some methadone, have some whiskey. Really easy night in, getting ready for tomorrow night's show. What do you well, think about the weather? Thanks, 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 Thanks very much. Thanks, guys! Guys! Thank you very much. Let him go. Thank you.